All right, I want to talk a little bit about the design for set. If you remember from times before, we have set is a card game where you have a deck of 81 cards. There are, on every card, there are four attributes. And for each of those attributes, there are three possibilities. And the attributes are color, shape, shading, and number. All right? The game set consists of finding on a grid of cards, cards that form a set. There's three cards in a set, and not all, not all groups of three cards are sets. It has to be a valid set. What makes a valid set? A set is valid if Interactions. 
What do you think the UI is going to look like for this? showing the user three cards and we're asking them yes or no. All right, is this a set or is this not a set? So this we're not doing the full game of set as of yet. You know, we could maybe look to see if we could take it to the next step after we finish that assignment. But all we need initially is three image views that are going to show the image for the card. Alternatively, we could have some text if we're having trouble drawing the cards. All right, text for the color, shape, and filling. We have a button. Yes, this is a set. No, this is not a set. And then we have a label to keep track of that. Are we going to do any inflating in this particular do you think we need to do any inflating of layouts in this particular app? Not yet, because they're Yeah, not yet, because we know we got three of these things. There's exactly three that we're going to look at. All right? If we were going to go on to write the full version of SAP where we had a grid and we could add to that grid and all that, then yeah, we'd probably do some inflating. What other classes are we going to have? Card, deck, player, and game rules. All right. Does this sound familiar to anything you've heard before? All right. Now, a good question, and certainly not going to make a requirement, but is to think. Could we generalize some of these classes to, so that we could use the same class or same structure for blackjack or set? Because you think about a deck in blackjack, all right? What did a deck in blackjack need to be able to do? What are some of the methods that were on it? It was created, all right? Shuffle, deal. Maybe it returned how many cards were left, depending on how you did it. How is that different than what we're doing here? We're going to deal cards. We're going to create the deck. We are going to, we might need to know how many cards are left, because in the actual game of set, not necessarily for round one, but in the actual game of set, you're done when you're out of cards. All right? And to deal the next card. So really, the behaviors and the methods are going to be real similar to what you had for Blackjack. Now, if your job was to develop, you were working for a gaming company, and your job was to develop a bunch of card games, you might consider working on a class structure that would accommodate all of these, just to make the code more reusable. Exactly. What I would think of is that you would have you would have abstract classes, all right? Um, you would have an abstract class for a card, let's say, all right? And then you would have specific cards that inherited from that, all right? Um, and they could be things like a standard blackjack, whatever you call that, standard decks cards, set cards, Pokemon cards, all right? You could do... Um, any sorts of things like that. You could then do a similar thing with decks. And really, the difference, what do you think the main difference would be between the deck classes? Number of cards. Yeah, and where would that be, you know, where would that come into play? Where would that be implemented, do you think? Could you put it in the uh, constructor? Yeah, I'm thinking if I had if I was creating a deck of cards, let's think of the difference between a deck of set cards and a deck of blackjack cards. The difference is the constructor. Constructor, in the case of a blackjack card, did what? It had two loops, probably, that iterated through the suits, 
iterated through two through eights and created 52 cards. All right. After that, if I had upside down two decks of cards here, from the perspective of the deck, what would be the difference of it? None. You could count the number of cards in each. You could deal each. You could shuffle them. I could shuffle cards. My method to shuffle cards doesn't require knowing what kind of cards they are. You could give me a deck of cards of a Klingon card game here, all right, or something that I never saw before in my life. And I'd pick them up and shuffle them, and I could deal them, right? So the only difference in the deck, I would think, I haven't thought this through 100%, but I would think would be in a constructor. A blackjack card would create, a blackjack deck would create a certain kind of card, all right? A sat deck would create a different kind of card and all that. And then where it would come into play, really the biggest difference for each of these, because even a card mainly has a face, right, has a back. The rules are what the di where the difference really lies, right? That's where the difference really lies. That's where how you evaluate what a card means. And that's true even if you're talking about the same deck, right? A poker hand versus a rummy hand, even though there's, well, I don't know. Would there be the same number of cards I don't know, at some point? A poker hand versus a rummy hand, you may have the same cards in them, but like how you value those cards and what you do with them, that's an aspect of the rules. Just like a blackjack versus poker or war versus blackjack or any standard card game. It's not the card that's different, it's the implementation and the rules. So you could probably, I would think, make these things fairly generic. So what methods are we going to have here? I would think we're going to have a constructor. Maybe a shuffle. Um, deal. Count. Maybe, if you want to get fancy, you can have a discard method, set of methods going to the discard. So in other words, when you're done, that's kind of part of the deck, right? The cards that were discarded from the previous hand. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We don't need to, really need to worry about that one. And a card. Display face. Display back. And what the name. And I guess this would be different depending on the card game. The attributes that you display. In other words, standard card has a value and a suit. A set card has a shape, a color, a filling, and a number. So the specific attributes you'd have would be different. But again, if you're thinking on OO terms, you'd probably have an abstract class. You would inherit from that then and have a blackjack class and a set class. The deck, you would have an abstract class. And you could probably put all these methods in the abstract class, and probably the only thing different would be the constructor to create the card with, I'm sorry, to create the deck with the right number of cards. That's one thing that's funny. It's like I'm not really sure in which of our courses this discussion kind of fits in, right? Because from what I gather in the intro to C class, in the intro to C sharp, you don't really do a lot of OO design stuff. You just, it's just really the basics of coding. And I'm not sure if you do this in the advanced C class or not. I definitely talk about it some in my Java class, and I talk about it in this class. And, and in, I try to sneak a little bit of it in in, in uh, a number of different classes. But I do think this is important to think through. All right? What, what uh, abstract class, when you're saying an abstract class, See, what I'm thinking when you have to use one of those classes, like a, a deck class, for example, that what's making the difference is I'm saying that in the constructor, I'm asking for how many cards. Right. And I would have one class that's deck, and then I have a constructor.
instructor with a, uh, a field of how many cards. Now, when you say abstract class, you're allowing um, many more different types of things. They say I'm not too clear on what abstract class is. I never use it. So All right. Sure. Well, that's a good question. What is an abstract class? Want to take a stab at it? An abstract class, right, can't be instantiated. All right? D did I interrupt? I'm sorry. Uh, I was saying that what carries from it has to build upon it. Like, never mind, you can probably say it better. All right. No, you're absolutely right. In other words, let's say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mechanic and I work on different vehicles. All right. I might work on tractors, um, motorcycles, automobiles, bicycles, airplanes. I'm a good mechanic. I can do all these things. All right. Right. Now, I work on vehicles. However, Everything I work on is not merely a vehicle. What I work on is some specific version of a vehicle. In other words, I might work on a motorcycle today. A motorcycle is a kind of vehicle. All right? So in other words, if I asked you, how did you get here to school today? Probably some vehicle brought you. All right? But your answer wouldn't be, I got here via a vehicle. All right? It's more specific than that. You'd say, I got here via my car. I got here via my motorcycle. I got here via my bus, by my bicycle, whatever. All right? So an abstract class, as was mentioned, is a class that you can instantiate. What does that mean? It means I cannot do this. Abstract vehicle v equals new abstract vehicle. Can't do that. All right? Because abstract class, assuming that that in fact is an abstract class, I cannot create an instance, and I, that is I can't say new abstract vehicle. All right? Because abstract vehicle is an abstract class. I can do this, though. I can have an abstract class called vehicle that's inherited by automobile, motorcycle, and whatever else. I could then say abstract class vehicle V equals new automobile. All right? That's legit. Why is that legit? Because an automobile is an example of an abstract class. Another one that they often use is a pet. You know, um, if you have a pet, that's fine and good. You can say, I have a pet. But, like, what kind of pet do I have? Well, it's just a pet. Well, no, it's, it's a bird, or it's a cat, or it's a dog, or it's a bunny, or whatever it is. All right? So, an abstract class is where you have a class where you can put some common methods that are common to all these things, but... An ins but, but every instance of that is an instance of something more specific. All right? So in other words, I'm never only going to have an abstract vehicle. I'm going to have a car or a motorcycle or a boat or whatever. I'm never only going to have a pet. I'm going to have a pet that is a cat or a pet that is a dog or a pet that is a um, snake or whatever. All right? So that's what we mean by abstract class. What are their values? Their value is that I can put code in the abstract class that's going to be shared. 
just like I can put code in any superclass that gets shared. So if I was looking at this, shuffling a deck, that could belong in my deck abstract class, right? Because I'm thinking if I was structuring this, I would have an abstract class for deck, and it's going to contain some sort of array list for cards. All right. So, shuffle, what does shuffle do? Well, shuffle takes and randomizes that array list. That's how you shuffle any deck of cards, right? The method to shuffle any deck of cards is the same as shuffling any other deck of cards, right? So again, if I had a, a blackjack, a pinochle deck, a sat deck, a Pokemon deck, if I needed to shuffle them, my algorithm that would randomize that array list, whatever it is, could be the same. All right? To deal. We've already seen this in Blackjack, right? To deal would do what? You'd give me the top, the, the thing in position zero of the array list, and then you'd remove that card from the array list. That's how I would deal a Blackjack hey, a card, a set card, any other card that I'm dealing out. That's what I do. You have the stack of cards, the array list. You flip over the top one or you give the top one to someone. It no longer lives in the deck, so you remove it from the deck. So that method could be in the ancestor. Count could live in the ancestor, right? Does it matter what kind of deck it is to count the number of cards in the array list? No. I can do that. Again, I, I always come back to like real life, you know. If I had a deck of cards, it doesn't matter if I know the game or not. If you gave me a pinochle deck of cards, all right, it doesn't matter that I know or don't know how to play pinochle. I can still count them, right? So that is an aspect of the deck itself. Now, in the case of an abstract function, we would make this an, I'm um, sorry, not abstract function, abstract class. The deck, you don't ever have only a deck of cards. Well, I got a deck of cards. What kind of cards are there? I don't know. They're just a deck. Well, you have a deck of something. You have a deck of blackjack cards. You have a deck of set cards. You have a deck of Pokemon cards. So, what would be different then is... Deck would be your abstract class. It would have property of the array list. It would have these methods on it. And then as I extended this class to make a blackjack deck or a set deck, probably the only thing I would need to do is create a constructor that would create and populate that array list with the proper number of cards. All right? So this would have a loop. Blackjack deck knows that when you make a blackjack deck, it has 52 cards. So it would go through the loop for the four suits, 13 cards, make the 52 cards. Set would go through a series of loops that would create a card for each color, shape, um, filling, and number. So it would be the same sort of thing. And I would think that after you filled in the constructor for this, everything else could live on the abstract level and would be inherited by the specific deck. Does that help clear it up? Oh, yeah. So, the, so it, for yourself and if you're on a team, they can they can uh, reference that abstract class and use it to build upon. Exactly. So in other words, let's say I finish. Let's say we did this and we did it this way. All right. So then 
I want, uh, I want to create a Crimes Against Humanity card game. I, I've never played that, but I've heard about it. It's supposed to be kind of funny. The deck is a deck, right? What is going to be different about the deck? Well, the specific card. So what would I do? I would extend the deck class. I would write the constructor to construct all the cards that belong in that deck. And then I would write a card class for that specific game. So any game that we wanted to create, all right, we would um, only need to, as far as the deck class goes, set the constructor for it. And we may or may not, or and then we would need to create a card class for that particular game. So um, maybe, maybe not. For example, well, no, never mind. Oh, I'm thinking of this. Yeah, Pinochle. I remember a Pinochle deck is, I think, what, nines and hires? And then there's two of each thing, if I remember right. Yeah, we need, we need, we need, we need some card players in here. But it's a different kind of deck, but it still uses some of the same cards. So I could probably use the same card class for Blackjack as Pinochle. The only thing is, is a Pinochle deck is arranged differently than that. There's, there's two of each card. There's two Ace of Spades, two Ace of Diamonds, and all that. All right? What's going to be in the player class? What did you have in the player class? I have, uh, I should probably add Jack. Or no. No. Okay. Okay, so you have their score. In other words, how many right, how many wrong. Anything else? I mean, you could probably put like name and stuff like that. Okay, you could put name, something like that. Um, you could potentially put like the hand class in there it, to draw parallels to blackjack. You could put the three cards that were dealt as attributes in the player class. The only reason that I say that is um, if you imagine transitioning from this to the full game of set. In the full game of set, what's the user going to do? They're going to tap on this card, this card, and this card. And those are the three cards we want to evaluate. Here, which three cards we want to evaluate? Well, it's the only three cards on the screen, right? Of course we want to evaluate those. But in set, as I touch those cards and say, here's my set, this card, this card, and this card, I want some place to put the cards that I selected, and those could go in the player class. What would be in the rules class? What would it accept? Or what functions would, would exist in the rules class? That's where the evaluation of the cards go. So, what would that function look like? What would the input to that function be? Check if it's a set. Right. What would what would the arguments be? Right. The three cards, or if you had a hand object that was a set of three cards, you could send that in there. And what would the return value be? A boolean that says yes it's a set, no it's not a set. So your UI then would compare the result of the rules object and compare that up against the answer that the user gave and tell them if they're right or wrong. If the answer matched what the rules object said, then they were right. If it was different, then they were wrong. Now, the evaluation process uh, when you evaluate the compare the three cards, mm -hmm. I wrote in one of my notes, is it possible, due to the fact you have four attributes, is it, I assume there's a way to take each object itself and do a first evaluation saying which object actually, the, the complete objects match each other, equal each other, by comparing the attributes. Is that what you would, like, uh, card one and card two equal each other based upon the attributes they possess? Is, is that the right? Okay. Um, well, let, let's talk about that. How are we going to tell if these three cards are the same? 
couple things to keep in mind. First of all, when you compare two objects, all right, and again, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is just a way that you worded it or if you meant it this way, but when you compare two objects, you are asking, are, is this the exact same object? Is this the exact same object? Do these things point to the same object? So a string with a value of Mike, uh, a string object with a value of Mike, if I create a second string object that also has a value of Mike, those two objects don't equal each other because it's Mike stored in two separate string objects. If I created a string object, set it equal to Mike, and then copied the pointer into another variable and then compared them, then those two would, would equal. So equaling when it comes to objects means something different than equaling when you're, you're talking about primitives. When you're talking about primitives like a Boolean or an integer or whatever or a date, equal means do their values match. In the case of an object, the funny thing is, is it still means that. But the value of an object is not the value of its attributes, but the value of the pointer. So what, where does it point? So it has to be the exact same object not another object with the same values. So, if you remember the chart I had on the board, the interesting thing is, is we could do all this, and in a short period of time, we could have all these functions defined and would know their signatures. In design, it's, it's key to, de to, to define the signature of a function. By a signature, I mean the name of the function, what it takes as arguments, and what it's going to return. Um, the details of how it's going to do its thing, that can come later. All right? That can come later. That's in the actual coding part. All right? And you could design, this is where you could write a flowchart, pseudocode, or develop a little chart that would determine how to implement that algorithm. So, let's imagine what we have here. We have cards. Each card is going to have a color attribute, a shape attribute, a shading attribute, and a number attribute. And we're going to have three cards. C1, C2, and C3. So, within our rules class, we're going to have a function that returns a boolean has some name, evaluate set, accepts these arguments, Somewhere down here returns the results. B results. All right. Or B results indicate whether it's that or not. Well, how do we get from here to here? Well, remember that for each of these attributes, we can check to see. For we can check to see color. We can determine whether they're all same, all different, or some same, some different. So, how would we do that for color? What would our code look like if you're going to write? I'm not going to write, I'm not going to pay attention to Java code. How could we tell if all three attributes are the same? Yeah, if C1 get color equals C2 get color And C2 
C1 get color equals C3 get color and C2 get color equals C3 get color. If all these are the same, then the color are all the same. I don't know. I'm very sleepy. <laughs> So if C1 matches C2 and C3, then we can conclude by the transitive property that C2 matches C3. You're absolutely right. Good, good call. No, 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 no. No, I, um, um, I appreciate it. So if we do that, then we know the colors are all the same. All right? How can we tell if the colors are all different? This is where we need the third condition. The third condition I put in. So I think we're going to say, and I don't feel bad for me saying I think, because this is you guys' homework project, right? It's like, I'm just giving you some ideas here, all right? So it's your job to figure this out. But I'm thinking we would look to see if C1 get color not equal to. C2 get color and C2, C1 get color not equal to C3 get color and here I think you need to say C2 get color, yeah, not equal to C3 get color. And I think that will work. Now, that being said, this is sort of a good, this, this way will work, it's sort of a brute force way, but you could probably come up with all sorts of clever ways that you could test. Could you put a, um, a three cards in an array and ask? Yeah, but you'd also have to ask if all elements didn't yeah. equal each other. So, this is what I like about programming, right? This is an implementation detail. The, the OO designer th says that we are going to have a method on a rules class that says evaluate set. And we're going to give it three cards as arguments we're going to return a Boolean. It is then the person who is programming its job to figure out how to code it. All right? It's a, it's a difference between looking at the big picture and looking at the details. All right? The designer looks at the big picture and says, we need a little chunk of code that does this. The person that's actually coding it develops the details of that. We do the similar thing for each of the attributes. And if all of them were, if none of them were some same and some different, then we would 
know that it was a sat and we return true. Now, again, if you think about this for a second, thinking about refactoring, if I was going to do the same thing for shape, what would the code look like? It would look, assuming that's the right code, if I did the same thing for shape, it would look exactly like that except shape would be in there instead of color. So maybe make into a new method that says evaluate attribute. And give instead of giving it the card, or instead of looking at specific attributes of the card, give as arguments to that function the value of the attribute, the value of the color attribute, the value of the shape attribute, the value of the um, color attribute, I think I said color twice, but the value of the specific attributes and use those to compare. All right? Because then, hey, this is tricky code. If you get it wrong, you want to be able to fix it in one place. And if you get it right once, you should be able to reap the benefits of that by not having to write that ugly code again. All right? Any questions? Now, how does this compare to what you had uh, for design? a requirement than more of a thinking forward to where the next step would be. So it, it sounds like you're pretty well on the mark. All right. Yeah. I, I do encourage you to work together on this. So, um, you know, collaborate, bounce ideas off of each other. I do want you to turn in a version of it yourself. But if you collaborated and worked together on it, if one of you wrote one set of classes, one of you wrote another class, you guys figure out how to work that, all right? Um, and uh, what I will probably talk about on Monday is drawing the cards. Because, because what? Well, because I doubt you're going to find a deck of set cards like we found a deck of standard cards with 52 images in it. I doubt if we're going to find a deck of set cards. So thing is, is a set deck is easy. We should be able to draw it. We saw from the canon game that we can draw circles. We can draw squares. All we need is one more shape, and we're in, we're in business. All right, that's all I have. You're welcome to use the rest of the time to work on this or any other assignments that you have.